Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hello. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. Did the cold plunge this morning. Me too. Got my blood flowing. I was thinking about a couple of things that we were talking about the other day. We were talking about intelligence, what it means to be smart. We were talking about what we now call the thinking quotient, the TQ, how that relates to IQ, EQ. I, I'm imagining that a lot of people would think, well, IQ measures your intelligence and your level of smarts. And I, I think that we should explain TQ, what TQ is and how it relates to those two things. Well, for, I guess first you gotta you gotta understand what these tests measure and um, and what te- what measurement. I, mean, I don't want to get too far deep into like measurement right. and stuff like that, but but you know what's possible to measure and what what can be measured doesn't always matter, and what matters doesn't yeah, always yeah. get measured, and all that kind of stuff, but. You know, these measurements are indicators, first of all. They're not they're not like the final word on anything. None of them are the final word on anything. Right. I mean, the IQ test was developed, I, I think, to, um, you know, to quickly sort yes. military folks yes. to, into jobs. It wasn't, uh, you know, it, it's it's very little more than that. And it, right. and it tests certain types of intelligence, logical, you know, visual, analytical, uh, analytical yeah. kind of intelligence. I think generally speaking, probably the difference, the biggest difference is if you think about intelligence, intelligence is kind of an outcome. It's yes. kind of an out, it's like yes. a, an, ex, an emergent property of a system, right? Mm-hmm. Um, whereas thinking is an input. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Emergent property of a system. You say these <laughs> things. You sneak these things in. And I'm like, wait a minute. Emergent property in complex adaptive systems, an emergent property is just like the the the, the output of the system, the behavior the of the system. The outcome. Yeah, it's an okay. outcome. So it's let's go back. Kind of an outcome. Yeah. Well, let's say outcome. Yeah. I think outcome works. It's like how the system behaves. It's how all the stuff that's happening inside of something leads to an outcome. Leads to like how right? it behaves. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, um, so intelligence is an outcome. And what we want to know is what you can do. So, so as an outcome, it doesn't tell you much about what you can do as the inputs. Okay. And for me, at least, I would rather know about the inputs because I can mm. alter the inputs. I can I can have agency or, or purpose around the inputs. Right. So if you tell me what I'm doing and what I can do differently to get better outcomes, to get better results, yes. that to me is more valuable than if you just tell me you got these results, but we, you know, we have no idea why, or maybe it's just because you were born that way or whatever. Right, right, which is a Lady Gaga song. What is way. born this way? Born. Great song. <laughs> okay. But so, but there's a lot of controversy around. I, well, there's a little bit of controversy around IQ, right? That it's sort of biased towards. So this is you're saying inputs. So if I if I think about that in relation to people are saying the IQ test is really biased based on socioeconomic status. Is that how you mean? Like the inputs. So if I come from a certain background, because my inputs are different, I'm likely to have a better IQ test. I'm kind of confused by that. Yeah. So there's there's sort of psychometric tests and edumetric tests, as you know. And yes, yes. Um, edumetric tests are tests that you can kind of do better on. Psychometric yeah. tests are tests that you can that that are sort of quote unquote measuring who you are fundamentally. Mm-hmm. Um, I find. The latter to be a little bit suspect. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that they're really measuring because because there's so much range in what you can achieve by right. just practice. Right. Right. So if we just gave you a, a test that said you know like you're gonna be a good basketball player, you're gonna be a good violinist. Well, any any person that put some agency behind and it, effort, and yeah. effort and yeah. practice could could blow that test out of the water because I see. Because evolution works, because because practice works, because yeah. skill is built on daily, yeah. you know, incremental change. So, I personally don't put a lot of weight in tests that tell me like who I be, you know, who I am, <laughs> uh, and and that's sort of an immutable 
characteristic of me because oh, because so much can change based on your your effort. So right. much can change based. We we are so fluid and so plastic. What's called plastic, which I don't like the word plastic because plastic's kind of rigid. Yeah. If you think about it, you but mean like moldable. It, yeah. In, in cognitive science, when we talk about plastic, we mean like really moldable. I guess in that sense, plastic is moldable. But what, <laughs> the output of plastic <laughs> is kind of hard, so it doesn't. To me, it's very fluid. Yeah. Our our personalities, our skills are very fluid. We right. we can change virtually anything uh, through incremental daily practice. practice. Yeah, practice. Okay, so maybe we should talk about the big myth of separating IQ mm -hmm. and EQ. I guess what I want to do is situate where is where does TQ, which is thinking quotient, how does that interact with both? Is it in between them? Is it part of both? Like. That would be confusing. Yeah. So again, I, I look at it as TQ is an edumetric test, which means yes. you can take it over and over again, and you should get different results if you practiced in between, right? Yeah. A psychometric test, hypothetically, the more the, you know, no matter how many times you take it, you would get the same thing because it's tell if if right. it's telling you what your personality is, for example, then you you know that's just who that's you who are. you are, and right? So it. it shouldn't change. Of course, it does change because yes. you learn the test, and humans up. are amazing <laughs> learners. So, or you grow up, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, <clears throat> so I mean, the big the big difference is that at TQ, the thinking quotient is designed around a being edumetric, meaning like you take it, take you it can take time. it over and over again, and you can improve. and you can improve. By definition, like you, it, the whole goal is to improve through practice. Which means we can do things to improve our ability to think Absolutely. better about yes. things. Yes, yes. There, and, and there are things you can do, inputs, to practice that you can do Very to increase your inputs. score. Absolutely. Okay. And at, whereas the, the, the reverse is not the case. Like you'd, you know, what I'm looking for is what is, what is measurable, you know, from a scientific perspective, what can we measure but also what is valuable and what is practicable, what is what is practicable mm -hmm. um, such that we can improve it over time. So what what can we do mm -hmm. about that score? And right. so if I just tell you, oh, you, you know, you're you're a genius, you know, well, well maybe yeah. if you just sat around and did <laughs> nothing and didn't learn anything new, that genius would. No, I'd still be a genius. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> or if I just go, you know, like like they told me when I was a kid, you know, that you're stupid and lazy yeah. or whatever. That's um, another podcast. That's a different <laughs> podcast. But, you know, then then that's just your that's your fate, right? But right. that's not that's not the case. And so, what I'm interested in is like, what can I practice? Yes. To increase my scores, and I think most people who are, you know most people are willing to work for something, right. and if you give them the the measure of how to you know just like a scale, you know, like you you're willing to work to lose weight. Okay, well the scale tells you how much you weigh. You're willing to work to to lift more yeah. iron, you know. Okay, well, the, the little thing, the little plates yeah. tell you how much you're lifting, right? Or yeah. you're willing to work to get a deeper stretch. Well, the depth or of the stretch the tells you, you know, do the splits, right? <laughs> the whole world's going to know. know. You're working on I'm doing working the on splits. splits man. It's hard. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. So we can practice. You can practice. I think and that's what, the big difference. So, yeah, what you're saying is IQ and EQ are sort of static numbers or scores that you get and you can't actually do anything technically to change them because they're psychometric tests but the 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 alternative is this edumetric test meaning you're measuring you're taking a snapshot in time of your level of skill right yes. across certain things and i guess well i i should correct one thing in case yeah. it's mis misunderstood it's not that you can't it's that the 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 premise of the test oh Right. implies that yeah. you can't but 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 it's not true that you can't right you can you build can. you yeah. can become a better thinker which will make you smarter which will make you you know more right. capable of dealing with more complex situations and things like that you can but it's implied when we say that we're going to measure your personality or we're going to measure your IQ or we're going to measure your EQ yeah. when 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 that is an immutable characteristic, then it is implied that there's really very little you can do about it. Right. 
right? right? And that's just not really terrifically in line with what we know about how humans work. That's a political way. It's ter- not terrifically aligned with. Yes. <laughs> meaning it's meaning, completely out of whack. It, it's, um, it, it, there is reason to question its uh, <laughs> basic premise. Validity. Its validity, right. yes. So let's dive a little deeper into the TQ and what it tells you. I know the TQ is a test. Obviously, I know that. <clears throat> yeah. And when you take the test, when you get your score or mm-hmm. a report back, what does it tell somebody about their thinking abilities? How, how does that work? What do they learn about themselves? Yeah, so the TQ, so again, I want to be very, uh, very transparent about any measurement. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if you measure your weight, yes, does that give you a comprehensive, does that number signify your comprehensive health? No, no, it doesn't, right? And no. and you could fluctuate five pounds or seven pounds in a day, depending yes. on how much you drink or d- alcohol or, or water, or, or water or, you know, yeah. how dehydrated you are or, or any right. number of things if you have an injury or something, right? right? So that the first thing is any number, any measurement is an indicator. It's not it's not an absolute thing, right? Okay, wait, you said that earlier. It's yeah. an indicator, meaning... What does that mean, actually? It's, it's an, an indication of, of where you're at, but it's not the whole story. There's there's qualitative. Uh, it's like you know, What you want to do is kind of take the qualitative. This is why mixed methods in research yeah. are important. You, you, you know this, right? I do and, know this. You know, because you want to you want to see whether the qualitative data and the quantitative data, do they kind of like point to each other? And that's yeah. where you get greater validities and things like that. So you're saying basically don't take it as gospel or the end all. It's sort of an indicator of that moment. It's in a great time indicator. Where you are yes. on certain sets of skills. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. So talk about the skills and things that are measured and what the report looks yeah, like. Yeah. So the other the other thing I would mention is what it measures. What, what's unique about the um, and and what took us nearly twenty years to to build this validated test is what's unique about it is it's measuring um, kind of metacognition. So it's measuring it's measuring what you're what you're doing that you don't really know you're doing. Right. And that's not easy to to measure. And so, um, so you, the first thing you'll notice when you take the TQ is the questions are quite different. Yes. Yeah. You've right. probably not been exposed to such questions or, or questions quite like this before, yes. um, because they're measuring what you're doing, kind of subconsciously, subconsciously or metacognitively, right? right? And they're measuring the way we organize information more than the information itself. Right. Um, and so that's the first thing. But what it's then doing is it's it's measuring to what extent you're doing these organizational patterns that we know about. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not going to go too deep into patterns those. Patterns of thinking. Patterns of yeah. thinking. And to what extent you're doing them in complete ways. So we know that people will bias certain patterns over others, certain elements over others. Right. And so what we're doing is is measuring, you know, how much are you biasing one versus right. the other? And your scores will kind of reveal to what extent are you seeing the, the different aspects of these patterns. Yes. Yeah, so in English, yeah, sorry. for a second here, what you're saying is basically your score is going to tell you across these skills that we're talking mm-hmm. about these underlying skills patterns of thinking mm-hmm. where you have where you have room for growth where mm-hmm. you have strengths yep. um, and and it gives you an indication of at that moment how good you are yep. at those things yep. yes yeah and then it tells you what that so then you know that you know what you're good at and what you're not good at areas of you know, like what you say pros and growth pros and growths right? or pros. strengths and weaknesses yeah we don't like the word weaknesses I know nobody likes Everybody the word weakness it. anymore although we have weaknesses yeah I mean I have obvious. weaknesses <laughs> yeah what we want to do is kind of buttress up our weaknesses and and keep doing more of our strengths right so that's yeah. the results of the test really are five different numbers yes. Um, the the four patterns and then the the way we mix and match those patterns, and so those five numbers are are super important to understanding kind of like where your strengths, what you're strong in, what you're weak in, or what where you can what where your pros are, where your grows are, and um, 
And so, you know, the the what you do with that information yeah. is pretty simple. It's like, well, we'll buttress up your weaknesses by practicing. Yeah. And remind yourself to keep doing kind of what your defaults are. Right. And and so I think it's also important to mention, so there's those five things, but there's two things on each. There's your competence or your skill level yeah. and your confidence level. And we did that purposefully. Yes. We did that purposely. So where people have blind spots, meaning they're overconfident, yes. they're more confident than they are competent. That's yep. a blind spot. Yep. If you remember Bob. Yep. Bob. At that conference. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so we should tell the Bob story. We've had many Bob stories. I know, but, but this is but one of my favorite Bob stories. classic story. Bob story. He was so sweet about it, yeah. Bob. He took it well. Yeah. So we were at a conference, yeah. an international conference. Yep. We had a group of people who had all, we had just handed them their scores. Their scores. Everybody got their scores in a whole like uh, room of people. And yes. then they were at tables, right? They were at tables because they were about to They're do an exercise. They discuss their yeah, scores. Yeah. 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 And they all work together. Yeah. They all friendly they yeah. all know each other. Yeah. So everybody knows Bob. Yeah. And you remember what Bob said? <laughs> Bob got a low perspective score. <laughs> he did. <laughs> and Bob's sitting at a table with like six other of his colleagues and right. says, uh, wow, my, my perspective taking score is really low. <laughs> like... <laughs> We're standing there, and like all six people are like, "Really, Bob?" <laughs> <laughs> and they're all laughing. That is not a surprise, yeah. Bob. And he was shocked. He was like, "What?" Like, you know, he so was nice. He was good about time. it, though, because then he's like, "Oh, now I know what I should pay attention to," because he was fine on everything else. Yeah. And he had no idea, ironically, that he was not Bob taking a lot of perspective. other perspectives. <laughs> but everybody else knew. They all knew. Yeah. <laughs> but he took it to heart. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so, so that's what the yeah. test does. It just yeah. helps you know like where your where your weaknesses are, and then and then what we do is we take the results of that, yep. and we just kind of say, okay, well, what are, we know from research, what are the things that you have to practice? That's really yes. important. That's I think probably the most. I, I, I'm embarrassed to say this, actually. You are. I'm just sort of embarrassed, but I sort of like. Um, it's sort of simultaneously embarrassing and also like super like, uh, what's the word like? <laughs> I don't know where you're profound going. and like meaningful. Meaningful, yeah. Like in over twenty something years of studying this stuff, we've learned a lot of things. We have, you know, thankfully. and a lot of things, and and had a lot of good research findings and all kinds of stuff. But the single most important thing that I would say I've learned. Mm-hmm. Something that I wouldn't have said 25, 30 years ago. Something that I that I didn't think 25, 30 years ago or didn't know at a at a deep level seems so obvious, which is practice. Yeah. Like you, you have yeah. to practice. You Just can't like any other learn. Thing. Yeah, because think of it, in in our education system that we grow up in, right? And in, in society that we grow up in, like information is everywhere. And we think that when we cover information that that means people learned it. Right. And in, in education, we actually call this the coverage curriculum, right? The te- yeah. Whatever the teacher covers is what gets learned. Right. Right. So we think if the teacher stood in front of the room and talked about it, then the students learned it, right? That's that's yeah. the idea. We covered that's it. That's the general. Oh, plan. we covered that. Yeah. It's not they learned that. That's Those are thought of as synonymous, but they're, they couldn't be more different. Yeah. Right. Just because you covered something, as you know, from we've taught many, many students. Yeah. Just because you've covered something doesn't mean at all that anybody learned anything. And the same thing happens in, in corporations and businesses, right? Yeah. Like you send out you a think, memo. Yeah. You send out a memo, you send out a PDF and you're like, oh, I shared the information. Everybody knows Everybody it. knows it. You're like, nobody and knows it. And then you it. act upon it. <laughs> yeah. You're like nobody knows it. Yeah. There's a huge difference between knowing something and information. Yes. Information is not the same as knowing. Right. Knowing or meaning is information and organization. So right. if they don't organize it the same way you do, then they don't understand it. Or, or they just understand it differently. Yeah, if they organize right. it differently, right. Then, then, right? So, uh, so we're talking about practice. So you're saying the thing we can practice is the organiza- organizing <laughs> rules, the organizing the principles of organizing your information, what you're talking about. Yeah. So the, th- I mean, the thing that we've learned 
the single most important thing that we've learned is you can practice it. And we yeah. and and then what we did some I don't know how many years ago, over a decade ago, is start is start researching, okay, what do people need to practice? Right. Right? Because when we realized that, we were like, oh, practice is the thing. Yeah. Thinking is a skill that you yeah. can learn, and all you need to do is practice. And thinking drives everything. So yeah. what do you need to practice? So what come, kind of coming full circle no, no. here to what we were talking about is once you know what your strengths and weaknesses are, then the, then the challenge becomes, okay, what, do I, what are the specific things that I need to do to build a practice around it? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And so this isn't so crazy. Like if you, if you find out your legs are weak, then what are the things that I need to do? Is it better to do squats or is it better to do, you know, yeah. leg extension or leg curls or, you know, yeah. jumping jacks or, you know, what am, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Um, so what we've what we've done is sort of connect. Well, OK, so if you're weak in this, do work on this. If you're weak in this, work on this. If you're weak in this, work on that. And that's what we call planning. You know, creating a plan, an action plan. Creating the action plan. Yeah, exactly. So, so a person gets their report. They understand, like Bob, where they need need work. Yep. Like Bob understood yep. he needed to work on perspective. And then we were actually in the room to say, hey, here's a couple of things you could practice yeah. to get better at that. Yep. But now, thankfully, we, know we can that. share that without actually having to be in the room. So we're not a bottleneck for that. So everybody learns. Yeah. Everybody has their Bob moment. Everybody. Right? Where they realize where they might have a little bit of a well and you know that thing you mentioned of the, that it's broken into competence or skill and yeah. confidence that's really important because um it, you can imagine if somebody isn't very good at something but they think they're really good at something that's kind of a dangerous personality yes, right like that's yes. somebody that's going to get you in trouble we've met those people yeah we met and, and, and there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of folks like that so what you want to know for yourself is like, if if my competence is here and my confidence is here, maybe I should be like, you know, ideally you want these two things to match because yeah. we want to love reality, right? Oh, that was yeah. our previous nice callback. podcast yeah. callback. That's right. So you ideally, a lot of people think, oh, I want my confidence to be lower than yeah. my competence. Yeah. But actually you want your confidence and your competence to be right on target. You want them to be, you know, you want you want to love reality. Right, right. But you can imagine if your confidence is higher than your confidence, competence. Confidence, If your yeah. confidence is higher than your competence. Did I say that backwards? No. If your confidence <laughs> is higher than your competence, your skill. Yes. Yeah. If you're if more you confident think, than you are skilled. Yeah. If you think more highly of your skill than you than the skills that you have, mm-hmm. that's kind of dangerous. Right. Right. And if you're down here, then that's kind of like you're not going to pipe up. You're not going to. Right. Know. Well, that's as, that's to me, that's as problematic. Being sure. underconfident For is sure. as problematic as overconfident. Yeah. And I see it all the time in a lot of our students, actually, where they're actually there's they're so underconfident, like you said, that they don't contribute where they can contribute. Oh, and they actually. Sorry have a lot to say that could actually crack into whatever problem they're trying to solve. You can imagine that on any like team, if one of your smartest people is so underconfident that they don't speak up and help you solve problems. That's, yeah, and they, that's and they an literally issue. have the solution, but they don't think yeah. they have the solution. So they won't say it. So they don't say it, yeah. yeah. So no, that's both that's ways. Both ways. So what we want is people that are kind of right there. Yeah. Skill, Confidence. perception of skill, right? And so the test measures that as well. So that yeah. you, the, again, because that's a really important metacognitive trait. Yes. And metacognition, the research on metacognition just is, is pretty clear that, you know, yeah. m- increasing your metacognitive awareness of how you think and and how you go about thinking, the patterns of thinking um, increases your your effectiveness and success in all domains. Yeah, and I'm glad you actually meant to mention that because for me, when I was starting to sort of really get into this many, many, many years ago, because as you know, I came up a different path yes. than you. Yes, you did. What's interesting to me is if you think about IQ and EQ, a lot of people don't realize that you can have this set of, that you have that you possess this set of thinking skills that you can equally apply to analytical information type problems as you can your own understanding your own self. So when I was saying earlier, does TQ live in between IQ and EQ? 
I guess when I'm thinking about it, it, it actually is more, I mean, thinking is in both intellectual yeah. and emotional, but I don't know that people often associate it because emotions, they think of feelings and yes. think of thinking. I know. That's right? one of the great so, misconceptions out there. So to me, that thinking. makes TQ unique and very powerful. Yeah, I, w I would even go so far as to say that, that TQ isn't in between. TQ drives both of those. Yes, TQ is the, the engine of, yeah. of those things. Yeah. I got dog hair on me. Bruno. We got tons of dogs. We should start talking about Bruno. We should have a whole podcast. Let's on blame Bruno. it on Bruno. <laughs> Bruno. <laughs> I have a series. What is that song? Well, we were talking about that you get the report, it gives you your scores, and then it creates an action plan, which is uh, sort of a personalized way for you to figure out how to get better at the things that you want to get better at. Well, so yeah. to, to be more specific, it does create somewhat of an action plan because it tells you like where your it tells you what your scores are. Um, you can see which scores are lower than others. Mm -hmm. It gives you a lot of information about you know what that means and how to interpret that. But then what the action plan is is really for you to decide like what you want to work on, right? Right, and and what resources in think you that you want to you know partake in so from that from those scores you can simply look at them kind of like rank order them from weakest right. to, to strongest right and then we can map from the weakest score let's say your weakest scores in perspectives oh okay well then we know one of the one of the pieces of research we've done is um we know that there's a Pareto law. Now, that just sounds like a, a crazy thing that people don't want to understand. But but all it all it really means it's an 80-20 rule. So yeah. if you think about like, if you think about an athlete, you know, you can put 20% effort. If somebody puts zero percent effort, they're going to be not a very not very good at let's say, anything. you know, ten, anything. Yeah. But let's say you know, uh, pole vaulting. Right or <laughs> whatever, something other, you know. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah, if you put zero percent gonna, effort. If you put zero percent effort, you're, you're not going to be good at it. But if you put like twenty percent effort, mm -hmm. you're going to be at okay, a uh, pretty good. You know, over time, you're yeah. going to become like a pretty good pole vaulter. Now yeah. you're not going to become an Olympic pole vaulter. No. So with twenty percent of effort, you're going to get to about eighty percent of the right. population. And, and so that 20% gets you to 80%. Mm -hmm. Now, the 80%, if you want to go from 80% to like 90 or 95 or 100%, right? That's Olympic level, 99, mm -hmm. 100 level. Well, that, that could take you 80% of the effort to make that last 20%. Okay. Does that make sense? So 20% of. of the effort is going to get you 80% of the benefit. Oh, that and to get that sense. last 20%, of benefit, it's going to take you 80% effort. Like a lot more effort. Yeah. So how does that relate to what you were just saying? So with thinking, it's the same. It's the same as uh, any other skill, right? So you're saying 20% of the of an effort is going to get you 80% of the benefit. And compared to the population that isn't doing anything, yeah, that's a huge benefit, an absolutely massive. monstrous, mo yeah. massive benefit. Yeah. So we know what that 20% is. We know exactly what it is. We know what the eighty percent is too. That, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. But but you know that's for people that really want to take it to the end level. But for most people, they just want to get like significantly better, competent, super competent uh, at thinking. And the twenty percent is these five moves. So that's right. the Pareto law. These right. five moves. Right. So it's is is not list, part party. Yep. Zoom in, zoom out. Um, RDS. RDS. And P circle, right? Right. Those are the five moves, and they kind of map to the four patterns in the, in yes. the mix and match, which is uh, the five scores that you get. So if you're low in D, for example, distinctions, identity, other distinctions, then you should be practicing is is not list. And there are several different. You were saying resources. Yes, yes. That allow you to. There's videos. There's videos, courses, courses. There's all readings, kinds of stuff. So a, that's up yeah. to you what right. you choose. If you're maybe right. you like reading, maybe you like watching do, video, maybe you like yeah, yeah. doing mapping. You know, there's all kinds of things in ThinkU that you can do. Right. And there's all kinds of people that can help you do it. 
Uh, or you could do the challenges, like there'll be a challenge that there will be a challenge. is is not list challenge or yep. something like that. So that's kind of the the specific plan is personal to you. And the other thing that's really important is the information that you're the situation that you're that you're practicing on is personal to you. Right. So you might want to do it my world. You're yeah, saying I'm gonna world. I'm gonna take so the things that you're gonna tell me to do I'm going to apply to what I'm yeah, doing that day. So that's super if I'm important. Feeding five big dogs, I'm going to figure Solve that out. Problem. Or if I'm trying to figure out the difference between a sales effort and a marketing effort, I can yeah. use is is not list. Yeah. If it's or, personal problem, per professional problem, relationship problem, but yeah. you know, a societal problem, whatever the or, thing that you care about is. Or if I'm Bob and I'm Bob. sitting in a meeting, yeah, you just need I'm going to remind work. myself to take every Everybody's other person's perspective. perspective. Yeah, that's a, a you know, relational, social problem that he's having. Thing. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. right. So is, is not, is for D, distinctions, for systems, part whole. It's uh, zoom in, zoom out, and part party. Those yes. are two, those are actually, zoom in, zoom out, you could think of as two moves, but you could also think of it as one. I think it is one. Yeah, so uh, so that, those two or one move, and then part party is another move. Yes. So you'd practice that. If you're looking at relationships, that also involves part party and RDS. Yes. Barbells. Yes, and if you're looking at perspectives as a weak score, then you're then you're just hitting on P circle perspective right. circles, right. and then there's mix and match, which is learning how to mix and match those. Yes. How to enter. And if your score is low there, you can start to combine, you know, part party with RDS. And there's lots of ways to practice those, but there's literally five moves that you can practice and immediately see benefits. Right. Immediately, like, you, you know, practice for a week, you'll be like, wow, amazing. Yeah, and I think it's interesting when you say mix and match. I mean, that seems abstract, but really what it means is, so maybe I'm going to change my perspective to see a different distinction yeah. or a different totally. relationship or totally. whatever. So it's, That's right. it's just having more than one of those patterns in the same. Yeah, or you do part party just means relating the parts of something, yes. Yes, which yes. people tend not to do, believe yes. it or not. Seems believe, pretty basic, but yeah. people tend not to do it. Yeah. So let's say you have four parts. You, there's six possible relationships. Well, you can mix and match with RDS. Yeah. So you just did part party to find the six relationships. And then each one of those relationships is a possible RDS. So that's combining part party with RDS and you get a wildly complex little little set of things. Yes. Wildly complex. Which matches the, the, the complexity reality. of reality. Back to reality. We're yeah. always talking about reality. Yeah, reality That's awesome. Thing. In a nutshell, the TQ. Take it. Get your report. results. Get your report. Read your report. Have your Bob moment. Have your Bob moment with your report. <laughs> and then move forward. <laughs> <laughs> Rank order your uh, your um, skills, your scale, your your scores. Yep, and then tie those to the five moves, which it does for you in the report. And yes. and then and then then your plan, which there's a form for for you to fill in, you know, for your own planning purposes, is. Okay, what what courses do I want to take? What challenges do I want to do? What yeah. what you know? Yeah. And some of the courses are like ten minutes, fifteen do. minutes. Yeah. Some are hours. It yeah. depends it's on how much to you. time. How much time do you yeah. want? Do you want to do ten yeah. minutes a uh, a week or ten minutes a day, or do you want right. to do you know an hour a day or an hour a week or an hour a month? Like it's up to you. I think that's a wrap. I I think that covers pretty much that's all the things you need to know. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap.